Today's message is a little bit different um, in that, well, I'll set the tone here. We have David and Goliath, they have that battle, and then the Philistines and the Israelites have their battle. The Israelites win, they're coming home, and now King David comes to King Saul, and this is what transpires after this. When David, and this is, uh, the text today is going to be 1 Samuel 18. When David had finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan was bound to the soul, or the soul of David. Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Saul took him that day and would not let him return to his father's house. Then Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as his own soul. Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that he was wearing and gave it to David and his armor and even his sword and his bow and his belt. David went out and was successful wherever Saul sent him. As a result, Saul set him over the army. So right now you have the king of Israel, King Saul, sets him up with the army of Israel. So Saul, at some point here, he had to, after what he had seen him do, he figured, well, this guy is, he's a killing machine, right? But now watch what happens here. As we find out later, later on in this chapter, we're going to find out that that was not so. Watch this. As a result, Saul set him over the army. All the people, even the servants of Saul, approved. As they were coming home, when David returned from killing a Philistine, the women came out of the towns of Israel, singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tambourines, with songs of joy, and with musical instruments. And the women sang to one another as they made merry. Now, I can just imagine this. You know, the women are, you know, I mean, we can talk about the head coverings all we want, but I bet they were making sure that these men saw them, right? They would have been very, you know, and the men, I'm sure, were hungry for women. And the women sang to one another as they made merry. Saul has killed his thousands and David his tens of thousands. Saul was very angry for the saying displeased him. He said, they have ascribed David to tens of thousands. And to me, they ascribed thousands? What more can he have but the kingdom? So Saul eyed David from that day on. That was the day that the jealousy and the envy rooted when he saw what the people, how the people responded to King David. So now they don't, they, 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 the king of Israel is supposed to be like the mightiest man in the land is only a few thousand, but yet King David was tens of thousands. So essentially there was, they, the people were, were ascribing King David already. He had already won the people's hearts and minds. And he, didn't, and he didn't do it with the intention to be the king. He just did it because, as we remember back earlier, when he was dealing with the Philistine Goliath, he said, you know, you're not going to defy the ranks of the army of Israel. That we serve a living God, not a God that's dead. You know, and this is part of, you know, King David's, uh, you know, belief that, that God is alive and he wants to work in your life and, and make things happen for you. But you got to be willing to get on the battlefield and be bold and without fear conquer that. The next day, an evil spirit from God rushed upon Saul and he raved within his house. While David was playing the lyre as he did day by day, Saul had his spear in his hand, and the Saul threw the spear, for he thought, I will pin David to the wall. And, but David eluded him not once, but twice. Saul was afraid of David, because the Lord was with him, but had departed from Saul. So Saul removed him from his presence, and made him a commander of a thousand. And David marched out and came in, leading the army. David had success in all his undertakings, for the Lord was with him. When Saul saw that he had great success, he stood in awe of him. So here you have the king of Israel, the most powerful man in the land, seeing the success of uh, a, a, a shepherd boy. You know? A man, that, just a farm boy, farm kid. 
and he's coming and he's he's killing tens of thousands, more than even the king himself. And he's doing all this, and the people are adoring King David. They are giving him what he should be getting, so he thought. And that's the first sign of a good leader is a, a leader that will see in others and want to build in others to become better than them, than they. Right? Because how can you have a strong kingdom of men if you're the best in the land, but every other man around you is the worst? A good leader is going to say, I want to be surrounded by the best, better than me. That's going to protect me as a king. Right? So you got to think like King David. King David was a much different man. He didn't, he didn't, he wasn't looking for, he wasn't seeking the kingdom. And it wasn't just handed over to him, right? He had to go through a lot of things to get to that point. There was a lot of obstacles and a lot of a war and a lot of pain and a lot of, you know, I could kill this man that's trying to kill me, but I spare him his life. He David would rather let God deal with his enemies. And if he had to fight, yes, you go fight, but let God deal with the enemies. And if the enemy happened to be the king of Israel, well, it was God that anointed him. And if anybody's going to take that king out, it'll be God, the one that anointed. That's why King David said in the Psalms, he says, you don't touch the anointed. If God anointed them, you leave them. You, it doesn't matter what they do wrong. You don't touch them. You let God deal with them. There's only God can be the one to judge them. They're in a different place than you. And once you understand this, and you understand the, the, the idea that you do not touch what God appoints and anoints, because there is a sacrifice, and we're going to find out what went wrong here. Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him, but had departed from Saul. So Saul removed from him his presence and made him a commander of a thousand. And David marched out and came in, leading the army on the battlefield, not in, not in the camps, not in the, the palace. He had to be leading the army. That's what a lot of good leaders are always with their people. You know, they're not sitting in air conditioned uh, offices and, and in deep underground bunkers, you know, barking out orders and, and, and worrying about the things of nothing. There's a greater war coming. David had success in all his undertakings, for the Lord was with him. When Saul saw that he had great success, he stood in awe of him. See, when he's seeing this, this is just like, who is this man? How does this man do this? How, how does he become the king? Like, they, they, they attribute greater things. The people love him more than the king. That wasn't true. They just said that King David killed more than him. That's it. People didn't. Where did the people say that they didn't like Saul? They just said that. Right? It was King David that killed Goliath. So you would think he would have a, a warm home coming. Not really. Boy. When Saul saw that he had great success, he stood in awe of him. But all Israel and Judah loved David, for it was he who marched out and came in leading them. But all Israel and Judah loved David, for it was he who marched out and came in leading them. When Saul saw, then Saul said to David, Here is my elder daughter Merib. I will give her to you as a wife. Only be valiant for me and fight the Lord's battles. For Saul thought, I will not raise a hand against him. Let the Philistines deal with him. See, he was, he was a conniving king. That jealousy and envy got him to the point where I'm not going to kill him. I'm not going to take the blame for killing this man that all the people love. I can't do that. Otherwise, I'll lose the kingdom. They'll turn on me. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll, I'll give him my wife and then, or my, my daughter to wife, and then I'll tell him, hey, go and fight these Philistines. You know, and then, then when the Philistines kill King David, then Saul can say, hey, you know, I didn't kill him. You know, then he'll become the king again. Because right now you can tell that the people already in their minds have chosen King David. He won the hearts and the minds of the people. You can tell that when they, and the way they talk about him. 
For Saul thought, I will not raise a hand against him. Let the Philistines deal with him. David said to Saul, who am I and who are my kinsfolk, my father's family in Israel, that I should be in a son-in-law? Right? Like, who am I to become a part of the royal family of Israel? Right? I'm just a shepherd boy, a little farm boy. I don't have any, we don't come from wealth, you know? But at the time when Saul's daughter, Merib, should have been given to David, she was given to Adriel, the Mehephalite, as a wife. Now that's a dirty move. Here you have, the king says, hey, I'm going to give you this woman. And then you take her, her back. And you give it to another man. You know, like, you talk about, you know, getting inside of a man's marriage bed, right? That, that's, but even that, even what King Saul did to him, he still didn't touch King Saul. Now Saul's daughter, Michael, loved David. Saul was told, and the thing pleased him. Saul thought, hmm, let me give her to him that she may be a snare for him. You see? So, so I'm going to give, I'm going to put this, if, she, if she's liking him, and uh, she's beautiful, she probably knock out, drop dead gorgeous. Well, then he'll marry, he'll, he'll, he'll take her as his wife, and then... And then I, got, I, can, I can control him, right, through my daughter. Let me give her to him that she may be a snare for him and that the hand of the Philistines may be against him. Therefore Saul said to David a second time, you shall now be my son-in-law. Saul commanded his servants, speak to David in private and say, see, the king is delighted with you and all his servants love you. Now then become the king's son-in-law. So Saul's servants reported these words to David in private. And David said, does it seem to you a little thing to become the king's son-in-law, seeing that I am a poor man and of no repute? So here you have a man who's saying, you know, I'm just a farm boy here. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I have no repute. Like, I don't have any, you know, reputation. I'm not like a, the head of a family. But you're also the guy that just, you know, put a stone in the slingshot and killed a nine foot tall giant and then cut his head off. But you don't have a repute. So even King David had a, he was a, uh, uh, a meek man. Probably the meekest man on earth, right? He just like, you know what I mean? You would think that after all that he had done, he'd be like walking around and he wasn't that kind of a man. No, he's a humble, you know? That's why God said, you know, this is a man after my own heart. That's, that's, so when he's coming here, he's going, look, I'm just a regular guy. Like, I'm not anything special. Watch what happens. So Saul's servants, uh, well, no, hold on. Therefore Saul said to David a second time, you shall now be my son-in-law. Saul commanded his servants, speak to David in private and say, see the king is delighted with you and all his servants love you. Now then become the king's son-in-law. So Saul's servants reported these words to David in private. And David said, does it seem to you a little thing to become the king's son-in-law, seeing that I am a poor man and of no repute? The servants of Saul told him, this is what David said. Then Saul said, thus shall you say to David, the king desires no marriage present except a hundred horsekins of the Philistines, that he may be avenged on the king's enemies. Now, you see right here, he's going, okay, look, so I've got Michael, or McCall, we call her McCall. She's a hot, beautiful girl. You know, surely he knows that King David is going to go out. Like, if, if you got this, if you got, your daughter is a, uh, a beautiful, stunning playboy playmate of the year, and she's hot. So he puts her in front of King David as a snare to get him to, you know, thinking like, hey, all you got, you don't have to pay me for her. All you got to do is just get me some Philistine foreskins. Watch this. You see? So he's hoping that he goes, he knows he's going to go out and do this. So he's hoping, well, he's out there fighting for his daughter, so to speak. Because he's thinking, well, I mean, I can have that one? Yeah. Well, hell. Foreskins. Man, I kill Goliath. I mean, I can get that. That's nothing. Watch this. The king desires no marriage present except a hundred foreskins of the Philistines that he may be avenged on the king's enemies. Now 
Saul planned to make David fall by the hand of the Philistines. When his servants told David these words, David was well pleased to be the king's son-in-law before the time had expired. So David's thinking like, you mean I can get that beautiful bombshell? You know, do you see the size of her, huh? Ha! Okay, let's go to war, folks. David rose and went along with his men and killed 100 of the Philistines. And David brought their foreskins, which were given in full number to the king that he might become the king's son-in-law. Saul gave him his daughter Michal as a wife. Now, you got to know that when this happened, you got to know that he, it, King Saul, is he's mad. Like he, you can tell now he's even angrier. Now he really wants to kill this guy. Because now he puts this beautiful daughter in front of him. King David goes, well, that's a piece of cake. I'll be back. And remember, it was, she loved him. Michal loved King David. She thought he was the hottest thing in the world. So he, when he saw, when King Saul and saw this, he was, it was all good. But he was using her and it backfired. But then King Saul realized that the Lord was with David and that Saul's daughter, Michael, loved him. I mean, can you imagine a guy going out and killing a hundred men just to get you in the bourgeois? Well, that's pretty special, right? I mean, who needs money when you got a guy like that? Right? So here, Michal is going to say, you know, I, I feel so safe around this man. Very safe. Saul was still more afraid of David. So Saul was David's enemy from that time forward. Then the commanders of the Philistines came out to battle. And as often as they came out, David had more success than all the servants of Saul. So that his fame became very, very great.